the simple story of why Bitcoin and AI are connected is that both technologies require large amounts of energy and electricity. And that's a feature, not a bug. So many of the Bitcoin miners are sitting on massive reserves of electricity at very cheap long term contracts two or three cents per kilowatt hour. Um, the cost of capital mm. for these Bitcoin miners is very, very high. They've been forced to fund their operations through dilution because their revenues fall by 50 percent every four years. If they can repurpose some of this electricity, upgrade their data centers to serve the AI and HPC markets, uh, their cost of capital comes down. Bitcoin miners trade at five or six times EBITDA. Uh, AI companies like CoreWeave trade at 20 times EBITDA. So even if you account for the extra CapEx that they have to spend to repurpose part of their data mm. center capacity, there's a huge EPS and multiple uplift. And it is an arbitrage opportunity for these companies that they are aggressively exploiting. Even the hyperscalers like Google have begun to get into this. Google took a 14% stake in TerraWolf, ticker WULF, which is a Bitcoin miner pursuing mm. an AI strategy. Uh, those stocks that have been most aggressive in pivoting to AI and repurposing part of that capacity have been the best performing stocks this year. And we think that trend is still early. Mm. What are some of the things that you think that people are getting wrong about crypto investing and understanding what it's going to be in three, five years from now on, not just about the you know, target price for Bitcoin and is it going to hit 1 million at some point or not? But what do you think that people are not really understanding or getting wrong at this point in time that you want to point out for our viewers? I think most investors get the point that Bitcoin has the potential to protect their assets against monetary and fiscal debasement. I think that many investors are still cautious because of the volatility in the space, the reflexive nature of the asset class. So that's what we've tried to do with uh, VanEck on-chain economy ETF is bring a lower volatility, diversified approach to the space where the companies that we own are going to have some of those same tailwinds, but without the leverage. Mm. On the altcoin side, we look at, at Ethereum and Solana as open source app stores that at their heart compete with Google Play and the Apple App Store. They let developers build storefronts on open source databases. Payments is included and it allows them to serve a global market uh, where the Ethereum blockchain takes a lower take rate, right? Apple and Google are taking 15 to 30 percent of those developer revenues. Ethereum and Solana, they take, you know, one to five percent take rate. So the potential is there for higher margins for developers. Uh, there's still a lot of friction in getting, uh, you know, consumer behavior to change. So, you know, that's reflected, mm -hmm. I think, in our position sizes. But the idea of uh, open source blockchains as app stores that compete with Google and Apple. I think that is still not well understood. If Ethereum reached Google's market cap, it would be $20,000 per coin. So we do see some, some upside in this space.